uh, cost of goods sold. And then on the customer side of things, when we have the invoice, the next thing is we have to receive payment on the invoice. So we send out the invoice, we track it, and then we're gonna get a payment on it. And the, usually we record then a receive payment. The receive payment could be an increase to cash, or you might put it into a clearing account called undeposited funds, which is a whole nother kind of issue. That's not really where our focus is right now, but, th but it might go into the undeposited funds and then the other side is going to decrease accounts receivable. That's our point right now. It's decreasing accounts receivable when we receive the payment. Uh, and then, of course, we could record the deposit, which might take it out of undeposited funds and record it into the bank account if we used undeposited funds here, which we might do in the situation where we have multiple deposits that we're going to be combining together that will hit the bank account in one lump sum often the case if we're using like credit cards or we have cash sales uh, for example so that's going to be the normal kind of process now also note that the sales order you'll see that it goes up top here to a purchase order as well why does that happen why am i going up here to the purchase order well yeah i mean if we got say a sales order we made an estimate we got a sales order let's say that we make custom surfboards or something or custom guitars or something like that well then we're gonna to have to actually order the guitar and the custom color or whatever they want. So if we don't have the, the product on hand, then we're gonna to have to order it or we're gonna to have to make it if it was a job cost system, in which case we might make a purchase order, which would then mean I'm gonna use the sales order to create the purchase order to request the inventory from my vendor so I can get the inventory and then turn around and sell it with the invoice. So then I go to the purchase order and then we get the inventory. So the inventory adds another layer of complexity. Now that's gonna be the normal process. Now a couple wrinkles in the normal process. One is that if you use an estimate and you have a job cost system, one in which the job takes a fairly long amount of time. So it's not like you're doing you know, you're not going to, you're, you're, it's not like you're going to do the job first and then invoice the client because the job is taking an extended period of time. Then you might not be using a normal revenue recognition principle, but a percentage of completion type of thing, meaning you're going to recognize revenue as you start doing the job. If you constructed an entire house or something like that, or had a large project within constructing a house, then you might be trying to, you might be appropriate then to recognize revenue, not when the job is done, but as you do the job. So now you have a revenue recognition issue. That's kind of a whole nother uh, type of accounting that we can, that is interesting field, good place to specialize in, but that's another kind of wrinkle in the situation. And then the wrinkle that we're really focused in on here is the idea, well, what if I, I get paid before I do the work? So, so now I'm going to say I'm still going to recognize the revenue possibly when the work is done, but I'm going to collect some revenue before I do the work because for multiple different reasons, right? One, I might be selling inventory. If I sell inventory and I have a custom inventory that I need to go to my vendor and purchase, you want a custom surfboard or guitar or whatever that has a certain color to it or something, I don't know, then I have to order it from the vendor and I'm only going to order that custom thing if you're locked into the sale. Well, how do I lock someone into the sale? We collect a down payment. We collect a deposit. So when we collect the deposit, we got paid before we did the work. That's where the issue comes about uh, in that situation. You have a similar situation with rental property. If you rent rental property, you might collect this, the last month's rent at the beginning as a way of locking people in, in the event that they kind of left or something like that. In which case, again, you got paid before you actually gave them the property, therefore you didn't earn it. And so you have this kind of this situation. You also might have the security deposit, which works basically the same kind of idea, meaning I'm gonna collect a security deposit, which I'm gonna give back to you if the property is in order when you leave. Again, you have this money that you haven't really earned uh, in that kind of situation. The other way that this often comes about is that you might be in an industry where you are in a subscription model. So it used to be newspapers, 
magazines, classic industry where you get paid before you do the work because they're on a subscription model and you have to give me the money before I start giving you the newspapers or magazines. Nowadays, computer uh, applications, of course, are running this way. So this is quite common. If you're in that kind of industry, we have computer applications, someone's gonna give you money up front, and then you didn't actually do the work, you're doing the work over the next year, if it's a yearly subscription, for example. So that's these are all areas where we have this situation where instead of me invoicing and then getting paid, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get paid and then we're gonna invoice. So in the deposit situation, if I, I'm gonna get paid, the security deposit on the surfboard, the guitar, the rental property, and then I'm gonna invoice in the future for the money I already got, but that's reversed, right? So that messes up the normal flow, uh, which messes up my whole tracking process within kind of like the customer center up top. So, so that's gonna be uh, the issue, or you're gonna get paid in a subscription model, a year's worth of subscription, and then we're basically going to invoice or we're going to recognize the revenue on a monthly basis, let's say, right, for the for the 12 months out of the year after we did the work, after we actually gave someone access to the software or whatever that uh, that we are providing. So so then, of course, the question is, well, you, you might have a similar process where someone's going to take a job. We have an estimate, let's say the custom surfboard situation. We're gonna say, okay, they want a custom surfboard. Here's how much it would cost. They commit to it. So we're gonna create the sales order. But then at the time that we create the sales order, we also are gonna receive a payment at that point in time. Now, the old way that we used to do this in QuickBooks is when we receive the payment, I would just record the receive of a payment and it would record it basically as an 